Greetings and welcome to the Transform Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Anastasio. This is episode 18, and it is Wednesday, December 15th, 2021. And first off, guys, just want to uh, issue a quick apology. Actually, uh, we were supposed to publish an episode uh, yesterday on the 14th, and it just kind of got derailed, So, um, <laughs> to put it simply. Uh, so definitely apologize for that, guys. If you were looking for new content from us yesterday, uh, but here we are on Wednesday with episode 18. Now, uh, may or may not be publishing on schedule tomorrow simply because we like to keep a little separation between the episodes. So so uh, look out for episode 19 either tomorrow, the 16th, or Friday, the 17th. Okay, but we definitely will have another episode out this week uh, if you're listening to this live or sometime today, tomorrow. So... Anyway, guys, uh, you know, 16 days left in the year, pretty crazy. Uh, I know everybody's kind of thinking about and looking ahead to the new year, uh, getting into 2022 and all that that, uh, all the promise that that holds for your business. And I think on a couple of other episodes, I've talked about how it's, it's just the perfect time of year. I think, you know, especially thinking of my perspective here in the United States, uh, where things slow down maybe just enough. I know it's never slow for a small business or medium-sized business, but it slows down just enough where you can kind of start gathering up your thoughts and uh, looking ahead a little bit to uh, the new year. So along those lines, um, you know, a platform that I really want to focus on today, but I want to get really granular about it, is LinkedIn. Okay, now LinkedIn arguably is the best platform for a business to get its, you know, get its message out, get its branding out, connect with other businesses, particularly, I mean, if you are in the B2B space, I mean, you just, it's hands down the best place to be. Uh, but even from a B2C perspective, I think you can make an argument that having a really strong, really um, well-grounded LinkedIn presence is a huge deal. And when you take a look at some of the numbers, um, associated with LinkedIn. I mean, I'll just give you this wave top and then what we're really going to get into, I mean, I should have mentioned this right up front, is this episode is just going to be all about LinkedIn hashtagging. Okay, how you can use LinkedIn hashtags to improve and increase your organic reach on the platform. Okay, so we're going to get very, very technical and tactical on that. It may not even be a very long episode, but, uh, but, but let me start off with some of these numbers on LinkedIn. So 706 million members in 200 countries, 141 million senior level influencers and decision makers. So you're talking about, what's that, 15% roughly of the people on this platform are somebody who very directly could pull the trigger on a deal with your company or on you know business dealings with your company. Um, but here's the shocker. Okay, this, this actually, this is a number that I could have guessed at some of those other numbers, particularly at 700 million, I kind of had that in the back of my head. Okay, the number of creators content-wise on LinkedIn 4.2 million. So let me just do a little bit of quick math here for you guys. So f- we'll just do 4 million divided by 706. That's literally half a percent of LinkedIn users are actually creating any content. And what it kind of means too, uh, and this is just such a crazy statistic, but it basically means for every content creator, there's 168 or so members consuming the content. So an absolutely incredible ratio. Um, you know, it's just really, really incredible. So, um, also just another note, uh, just in terms of activity on LinkedIn, you have 40% of all monthly active users are on LinkedIn on a daily basis. So that's, that's a pretty hefty number from a daily basis perspective. So anyway, I just want to set the table with that. If you're kind of thinking like, well, um, you know, should I be there? Is it worth being there? I mean, these are just some numbers to try to, you know, disabuse you of the notion that you shouldn't waste too much time on LinkedIn uh, if you were happening to, to think along those lines. So let's talk about hashtags. Let's jump right into that. Um, so you're going you're gonna to want to use well thought out, targeted hashtags to take your organic content. You know, you post a textual update, graphical update, a video, whatever it might be. And you want to put you want to put hashtags around that um, that post that help to sort of elevate and 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 um, penetrate certain conversations and circles of dialogue that are going on out there on the platform. Okay, so um, you know 
what I want to start off with is, well, just how do you do it and make sure you're not making any mistakes with it? And this may seem obvious to some of the people who are very steeped in this, but right off the bat, you got to know, you don't use spaces, dashes, commas, symbols, extra punctuation, or really any punctuation besides the very first uh, pound sign uh, when you do a LinkedIn hashtag. Like as soon as you start inserting stuff like that, you've essentially interrupted the hashtag. So that's kind of a big deal. Just in case you didn't know that, you're not going to be effective with it if you're not constructing them correctly. Okay, so that's kind of a big deal. Um, so the second thing uh, that you want to keep in mind when you're building hashtags, um, and, and let me actually back up for a second, uh, go even more basic than how to do the hashtag. You say, well, of course, what is the purpose of a hashtag? Why do I even have a hashtag? Why should I ever put a hashtag? So what you're really kind of doing when you, when you create hashtags around your content is you're putting a marker on that content uh, that allows it to be easier for someone to find that content. So in, in other words, instead of somebody just randomly searching a bunch of words or concepts or terms, if the, if the person searching you know, knows enough to use the hashtag protocol, you know, like, hey, I want to search on hashtag you know, LinkedIn, for example then anything that has that hashtag is gonna come up in that search. I mean, it automatically kind of matches the two together. So it becomes a way to kind of like, you know, sort of card catalog, if you will. I mean, it's kind of an obtuse analogy, but, but you know, it kind of mark off your content as, hey, it's in these categories, these hashtags. And so if anybody else searches on these categories and hashtags, show my content to them. Okay, so it really produces like a very one-to-one -one relationship between the search and the content that comes up because of the search. Okay, so I should have mentioned that right off the bat, but you know, let's back up to that first. Now, you know, coming back around to where I left off, uh, we talked about how to build the hashtag properly. You know, no spaces, punctuation, etc. So don't repeat a hashtag hashtag more than once. So you don't have to put like you know hashtag LinkedIn at the beginning of your post and hashtag LinkedIn at the end of your post. You, you don't you don't have to do that, and it just kind of creates a distracting effect when somebody reads. Your, um, your, your textual content. Okay, so here's, I, I think actually, as long as you understood to begin with what hashtags were and that wasn't kind of mind blowing for you, here's the one that I think is actually the most interesting. Um, and, and there's people who are gonna debate this. I mean, this is not, this is not something that I think everybody would, would totally accept as, as a law, but, but but one thing we want to encourage you to, 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 to do is to do some testing and experimenting. And this is definitely something I think you should follow along with and attempt to say, okay, let me try this approach and see what kind of results I'm getting with it. And that is don't use too many hashtags. Okay. Now, so the rule of thumb for LinkedIn is one to five hashtags. Okay. And the interesting thing about that is if you go over, let's say, to Instagram, where you can use up to 30 hashtags, you're gonna see a lot of people saying use all 30, or at least use the bulk of them. Use somewhere between 20 to 30 of them. And you say, well, wait a second, like if that's what I'm supposed to be doing over on Instagram, why am I only using one to five hashtags on LinkedIn? So that's where I think the debate kind of opens up a little bit. I'm not gonna to try to resolve it here because I can't. But I think what's interesting to note is why there is the belief around the one to five hashtags. And that is that on LinkedIn, Think of it as like a, like a pizza pie, and each slice of that pie is a hashtag. So obviously the more hashtags you use, the smaller the slices. And the smaller the slices, the less effect that slice has on you, okay? So if you want some big slices that are hearty and you know, really satiate the appetite of the person searching, then you wanna limit those slices so they're as big as possible and they deliver the biggest punch and the biggest impact. Okay, so it's really kind of um, an interesting way to look at it, but the less hashtags you have, but of course the more tightly coupled they are to your content. I mean, you want, I mean if you're using one to five hashtags, you gotta make sure you're using the right ones because you can't use this shotgun blast to cover all types of ground. So you have to be very careful and thoughtful about how you uh, pick those hashtags. But then once you pick them, you now have a better chance of you know, sort of flowing into a trending conversation on those hashtags because they're delivering more impact as I described a moment ago. So it's really kind of an interesting way to look at it and I think it's definitely something that you should 
uh, take a look at uh, when you when you go to develop yours. Okay. Uh, so some other quick tips, guys. Uh, don't don't split up words. You know, don't take something like social media and make it into social. You know, hashtag social, hashtag media. Just present the concept as a whole. You know, hashtag digital marketing, hashtag New York, not you know hashtag New hashtag York. Okay. <laughs> so it's not you know it's not going to help you, any, uh, and it's and it's actually going to hurt you. Uh, no emojis. I think that's probably an obvious one to people who have used LinkedIn even for a few moments. You've noticed that there are, there are no emojis in, in the hashtags. If you ever do see one, then you know that that hashtag was basically nullified uh, uh, by it. Um, so irrelevant hashtags, like going after hashtags because there's a lot of you know, followers of that hashtag. Like, you know, in other words, you could say, well, hey, I'm going to use five hashtags on my post. Four of them are going to be very relevant to the content, but I'm just going to grab a random trending hashtag so I can just get more visibility and I can just get in front of more people. Not going to help you much because LinkedIn is going to emphasize the relevancy of the coupling between the hashtags you chose and the content you developed. So focus on being germane, being relevant, you know, being on topic and putting these two things together uh, in, a, in, a, in a thoughtful way. Don't just, you know, hey, you know, uh, World Series is trending, so I'm going to throw that into my post about, you know, a business-to-business relationship. I mean, you know, just bad example, but, you know, the point is it's not going to help you, so don't, don't bother doing it. So those are really, I mean, honestly, guys, that's really what I wanted to kind of go over, um, uh, go over with you. Um, but there are some other little things I think you can kind of consider. I think those are sort of the main things we would want you guys to keep in mind as you use LinkedIn. Um, you know, some other little things like you could use capitalization, um, to kind of, you know, make something a little more personalized or kind of stylize it. It's not going to actually matter. Okay. The, the hashtags are case insensitive. If, if anybody's wondering about that, I think that might be one of the more common questions actually about hashtags. So they're case insensitive, but the bottom line is, um, you know, you can use the capitalization approach to make something look a little bit more natural. Like if you were actually hashtagging LinkedIn, you might capitalize the L and then the the, uh, the second I, and now it actually looks the way LinkedIn is spelled. So that would be an example of uh, of doing something like that. Uh, don't be afraid to brand your own hashtag. I mean, like you can create, you know, a, a term or a concept or a, or a descriptor. Of your business and you can hashtag that and then you just keep using it over and over and over again you know a company motto or a slogan or a mantra that you that you employ in your business that would be an interesting thing for you to hashtag and you know kind of get people used to seeing um, you know get you know get used to seeing that and kind of you know like expecting that from your from your content okay um, another one um, that's kind of interesting is just in general, like across an entire hashtag, you got to make a space between them. You can't go hashtag whatever your word is, followed immediately by another pound sign. You have to put a space between them to kind of separate them out and make them distinct. So that's another one to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, so, you know, you could also look for, you know, kind of going back to the whole irrelevant hashtag thing, you could look for, you know, sort of modifying that guidance a little bit. You could look for... for um, you know, for uh, popular hashtags, but ones that have something to do with your post. So you look at your post, you put your hashtags in there that really couple up nicely with your content, but you might leave one or two open to say, well, is there anything trending or anything popular that maybe does relate to my post? And I can add those hashtags in as well. So you sort of get this cross section of maybe very narrow hashtags on small audiences that are very, very highly responsive to your content because they're so... They're so ingrained in what you're talking about in that content. And on the other end of the spectrum, you could maybe broaden it out a little bit and look for popularity to just get more eyeballs on your content. And then that, you know, then that'll sort itself out in terms of who responds to you uh, and who, um, you know, who engages with your content. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to kind of do it for this podcast, guys. I think, you know, it may seem a little bit granular to go down to this level and talk hashtags on LinkedIn. Uh, maybe maybe some of you uh, would be surprised that we would make a whole episode out of that. But I think the real issue is um, recognizing the utility of LinkedIn, how powerful it is from an organic perspective, 
and then kind of giving you a slice of how you can take advantage of that organic reach, and that is through proper hashtagging and good practitionership with regard to knowing you know, how to do it, how best to make, you know, have it make an impact, and that sort of thing. So anyway, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. If anybody has any questions on this or you want to reach out to us and ask us about you know, you know, best practices here or how we do things when it comes to, to, to using LinkedIn as a platform or doing hashtags or whatever the case may be, uh, reach out to us on Facebook, reach out to us on LinkedIn. Uh, you can also contact us through our website and here uh, through the podcast. But uh, you know, as always, guys, we appreciate you listening. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, you know, you know, tell somebody about this podcast if you're enjoying it, if it's been helpful. Definitely appreciate you telling uh, others about it. Um, and we just appreciate you spending your 15, 20, 25 minutes with us uh, as we attempt to help as many businesses as we can uh, with, you know, this value-added type of content. Or if you want to engage us in a direct relationship, of course, we would be excited to have that conversation with you. So anyway, once again, I'm Chris Anastasio. Uh, this Transform, Transform podcast will be back again at the end of this week with another episode uh, and we'll be publishing through the holiday so I mean we will we will also be publishing uh, the week of the 20th and the week of the 27th so there'll be no you know I don't want you guys to think that uh, there's no use checking in those weeks uh, so we should have over 20 episodes up here on the channel by the time the year is over with so all right once again guys thank you so much uh, like share subscribe I'm Chris Anastasio with Transform thanks a lot guys you have a great night bye-bye